What's going on guys and welcome back to my next video. Today we are going to be doing a tier list and well it's not really a surprise as to what anime this tier list is going to be about. I mean a lot of my recent videos have been about it but like right now I'm obsessed with One Piece okay like absolutely obsessed with it. I'm caught up on the manga still watching the anime but almost caught up and it's just amazing. Now originally what I really wanted to do was a um, arc tier list, doing all the different story arcs, and there's, there's a lot of them. And I did that for Dragon Ball too, but I realized every, like the past like five-ish arcs have really been setting up for Wano. So I feel like it's kind of unfair for me to like do this while Wano is still going on. Like I want Wano to finish, then I can look at the previous arcs in a you know like a, a complete sense, like a different sense of light. And I like, I guess that I really won't be able to decide how I feel about each of the arc until the series is finished. But at that point, it's going to be like another five years. I think I'll be able to just make another tier list uh, when it eventually happens, if I'm still uploading videos then. But yeah, so this is One Piece crew members, aka the Straw Hats. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have the 10 human straw hats and the, well, human is, I mean, most of them are human, right? Except for Jimbei. Jimbei is a fishman. And Frankie is a cyborg, I guess. I mean, he's still human, right? Well, I guess cyborgs are still human. They're half human. And, I mean, hum humans in one piece, piece is weird, right? I'm going to go on a small tangent. Right, because they're like all of these different species, okay? Like they're the giants, the fishmen, like the Oda does make a lot of different creatures, right? His world building is insane. But then the humans are also so diverse. Like, hold on, Big Mom? I'm pretty sure Big Mom is a human. I'm, I'm not completely sure on that, but I'm almost sure she's a human. Yet she's still like, she's like almost as tall as a giant, right? Or like, Maybe not, maybe like half as tall. I don't know, I'm kind of, I'm rambling. But still, it's just like, what even are humans, right? Well, I guess One Piece, all of the characters are just that big. Oh yeah, to Chopper, Chopper's also reindeer. Not a Tanuki, right? Don't say that to him, because he will get upset. One of my favorite parts in the manga in Wano during the raid. And I don't know if it's been animated yet, I don't think so. So slight anime spoilers. Or slight manga spoilers, I should say. But, well, I guess it's not slight. Um, okay, anyways. I, I I won't spoil it. Um, but just, if you read the manga, you know what I'm talking about. Involving Chopper and everyone else. You know, he's like... Okay. Anyways. Um, I think, so there's S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier. I think that's just enough. Because I don't think I'm going to rank any of these characters F tier. By any means. So I think we can start out from left to right, and starting off with Brooke, who's a very controversial straw hat, I'm pretty sure, because you know, it's like, yo ho ho ho, panty jokes, right? And that's how it was at first, right? At first, Brooke, Brooks was, er, not Brooks, Brooke was really annoying, okay? I did not like him at all, but I liked his design, like, when I went into watching One Piece, one of the things I knew was that there was going to be a skeleton, a talking skeleton, I'm like, that's awesome, that's sick. And he came, and I was like, yo, he's sick. And then he just got kind of, not uninteresting, but just annoying, I guess. Because, like, he made all these different, like, jokes and stuff, and it's just the same type of humor over and over again. It's like, oh, I, uh, this doesn't make me pop my eyeballs up, but I don't have any eyeballs, yo ho ho ho. It's like, okay, we get it, shut up. But then, after the time skip... I do think his uh, personality and just his character overall drastically improved and I think that does make sense story-wise because Brooke has spent or had had spent 50 or so years or was it 50 I think 50 years on the boat by himself so obviously his sense of boundaries and jokes or, and his sense of humor has gone like off the rails so only jokes he can think of making our ones involving himself because he was only with himself for those 50 years so I think that does make a lot of sense even though those yo -ho, ho jokes they still stay on but he just becomes a much more bearable character 
especially during Zo. I loved Brook during Zo. He was like the the logical one, which you know, it's always nice to have one of those and like the, this group of you know eccentric weirdos, right? So I really liked him, and I I like in the anime his song. He, Brook is just a great character. He's also one of the very few Straw Hats that I think had their design improved over the time skip. I honestly think he is the only one that I can defini definitively say, yeah, no, he definitely, he's definitely better post time skip in terms of uh, appearance. Cause like he just got the drip, you know, he got all dressed up before he was just a skeleton, and now he's just he's cool. So I'm not gonna put him in S tier, but I am gonna put him in A tier. I love Brook, and of course, with I don't even need to mention Whole Cake Island, right? Amazing. Next we have Chopper. Or Choppa and Chopper is a difficult one for me to decide. He, I Drum Island, sorry Drum Island. Okay, I didn't even talk about the Dollar Bark. Dollar Bark was okay, right? But Brook, you know, he he's still a cool character. But Drum Island for in this case for Chopper, he, like Brook is. Ba oh yeah, another thing. Brook's backstory, one of my favorites, if not my favorite backstory in the series. That's probably controversial. People say. Oh, what about Sanji? What about Odin? What about all these different characters? Like, no, I think Brook is my favorite. It's just, it just hits me in the feels every time, you know? Chopper is... I, it's like Dr. Hero Luke, his death about, or his speech about death, that was cool. But like, overall, Gem Island was a pretty weak arc. Like, not really anything that memorable. Um, in terms of character, his, his entire appeal is that he's cute, right? Like, oh, he's a cute little reindeer boy, right? And that's cool, but as a character, that really isn't enough. He's also a doctor, which is, is nice, you know, he provides some utility. And then again, again, like his entire personality is like, he's also like a Usopp where he's like a coward and he like, he's like Luffy where he believes in everything. And I love Chopper, I do. So I'm going to be putting him in B tier, but I still really like him. It's just that. He's not really that enough for him to stand out and be that A or S tier. Now we have the Going Mary. And this is going to make a lot of people mad. I'm gonna put Going Mary in C tier, right? And look, any Lobby. A lot of people put Mary in A or S tier even, but any Lobby was a great arc, right? And the ending, oh my god, Mary's Viking funeral, that was amazing. That was great right but here's the thing we get like the explanation they give f for us for mary being alive just like it's i didn't really feel like it was enough you know like frankie just kind of goes yeah so there's like clopterman's or whatever it was called and that means your boat's alive and we we're just kind of expected to like be like okay the boats are alive that's something we're gonna accept now and not have any follow-up questions but i'm like I have follow-up questions, right? Like, how are boats sentient? At what point do they become sentient? Like, it's kind of like the whole Toy Story thing. At what point in the toy-making process does do toys become sentient? And for boats, I guess it's like when the crew really loves their boat, then it can grow a conscious of its own. And I, I, I like that, okay? Like, the whole iceberg scene, where he, like, abandons Mary, and then Mary, like, calls out to him. That was emotional, although I was still, like, kind of, like, skeptical, like, I really, I feel even for One Piece, this is a bit, you know, a bit like fairy tale-ish. Not fairy tales in the anime, but fairy tales in like actual fairy tales, you know, like Disney-ish. But still, it was a super sad scene. Mary also will always be part of my heart, and C does seem, you know, maybe a little low. But it, you have to also have to consider that I do want her to be an S and a D tier for each of these. Rose and I do think that Mary is I really like Mary I really like her I guess cause she's a boat but I guess for this sake she is a C tier Frankie Frankie I think is gonna go on with her in C tier Frankie I like Frankie again same thing with Mary I like Frankie um one of the big things though is that I feel like whenever I think of Frankie all I can think of is post time skip Frankie I feel like pre times Frankie didn't do as much of significance. Like, like even compared to Brooke, I, like, there, there's the thing, like, after a straw has, hat is recruited, over the next, like, arc or so, they kind of, like, 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 meld into part of the crew. 
right? We can see that for like a bunch of different characters, right? Um, Frankie didn't feel that way. He got he, in Water Seven and Ennius Lobby. Water Seven, he was kind of a main character, but in Ennius Lobby, which was supposed to be part of his story arc, like his recruitment arc, it still felt like he was the side character. So when he did get recruited, it didn't like it didn't. It just felt like he was just there. And then Thriller Bark came, and that's when time like okay, Frankie's in the shine. He didn't really do much of significance, really. And then Shibani Archipelago, uh, and then the time skip happened. So pre time skip Frankie, that he's there, and then post time skip Frankie, robot jokes. That's it. He doesn't do as well. He did the thing in just Rosa, or whatever. Wano, I honestly don't know what to say. He did. Can I say that? I don't know if it's been animated or not. But he did do something in the raid. And I thought when I was reading that, that that's pretty cool. But yeah, also design wise, I'm, I'm sorry. I like pre time skip Frankie design better. Post time skip Frankie, it's cool. Like, I like, I actually do like the robot parts where you can like make a little hand come out of his big hand. But just overall, I, I just like. Like his old design better. Jinbei. Jinbei is gonna be a hard one for me. Cause Jinbei as a character, I do really like. But as a straw hat, I still don't really consider him one. But I think I'm still gonna give him B tier. I might move it down to a C tier. Alright? And it's gonna make me seem like I hate. Look, C tier isn't that bad really, but. Still, like, I don't want to put all these characters in C tier, but Jimbei, I I just I, I do like him. I like his backstory with Arlong. One thing I did like about the Fisherman Island Arlong flashback was it did give uh what's it called like not motivation, but it it gave you a reason as to why Arlong is the way he is. But it also didn't excuse his actions, which I feel like a lot of back villain backstories try to do. Like they they like give you the stop story. It's like oh look at look at this villain. Like he got defeated, but now he has a back sad backstory. So he really isn't that bad of a guy. But I, I don't think the Fisherman Island ba uh, backstory did that for Arlong at all. It just showed yes, it's understandable why he became the way he is. But he's still a terrible person, right? Like Jinbei and Arlong, they suffered the same fate, kind of, and then. Arlong turned out way worse and also way weaker, but that was that's besides the point. But yeah, Jimbe, I also like his like stoic nature, which I don't I still don't know how that'll fit within the straw hat dynamic. I'm sure Odo will find a way. But yeah, I also, you know, his personality, his oh my god, his 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 uh, I think the big mom where he's like if I'm gonna be the Helmsman of the future pirate king that I can't be uh, scared of a mere Yonko or something like that. That was great. See, so yeah, overall, just a great character. Again, nothing really special about him that's gonna bump to A and S. I did like him in Marine Ford, right? I like his water style powers. Sorry, it's it's very rare that we get to see like elemental style uh, powers in One Piece, and if we do, it's mostly fire and then lightning in Nami's case. But water, um, I really like him. I really like his fighting style, um, the Fishman Karate, great. So yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about Jinbei. Usopp is an S tier. Uh, yeah, Usopp has always been one of my favorite, and he had been my favorite for a, a long time. And Usopp just great. I feel like if you, like you might not like Usopp, right? But if you encounter someone who does, you have to understand why, right? You may not like him, but you have to understand why people like him, right? His cowardness and like his un his him being scared, right? When when pace, placed in these situations, all the other straw hats are like, oh, let's go on to the adventure, and him, Nami, you know, Chopper, especially Usopp though, like he's considered the weakest. I'm pretty sure Oda said in SBS that Usopp like is always going to be the weakest, or like he wants Oda or he wants Usopp to be the weakest, but. Um, what's even my point here? Oh yeah, him being scared just like makes him feel grounded and shows that like if when someone reads or watches One Piece, they would also be scared in that position. And Usopp just shows like how people would feel. But despite this, he still like keeps moving. He pushes on in every battle. He finds a way to win. 
right? And it's like, what's the, it's like the thing about courage is like, you can't be brave unless you're afraid. Or, yeah, you can't be brave unless you're scared. Because if you're not scared, then you're not being brave. You're just being normal, right? Because right? you're not facing anything. You're facing something that's not scary to you. So if you're facing something that's not scary to you, why would it be considered brave to face it? So Usopp's great. Also, and another thing I talked about is battles. His battles are great. Um, especially Usopp versus Barona. Usopp versus Miss Merry Christmas, I want to say. I think that's wrong. Merry something. Or not Merry something, but Miss something. Um, so that was great with Chopper. And then, who else? There's another one. Oh yeah, Usopp versus Luffy. Oh my god, that's my favorite fight in the series. Uh, or one of my favorite fights in the series. I don't know what my favorite fight is, but Uso vs. Luffy. Like, usually in One Piece, I'm way more for the story and the drama rather than the action, but that is one of the rare times that the action has actually kept me super, like, hooked and, like, whatever, you know? Because usually during ba uh, battle episodes, like, Luffy vs. Oh my god, Luffy versus Luchi, Luffy versus Crocodile, those are all interesting, but it's not like, I'm usually on the edge of my seat wondering what's going to happen next, because Luffy's going to win, you know, except Crocodile, but that's like a different story. Um, but yeah, so Usopp's just great. Him, his character development too, amazing. The fact that all of his lies come true, God, Usopp, you know, he has 10,000 men behind him or whatever. He's just a great character. Now, Nami. Nami is a character that I have a love-hate relationship with. First, when she was introduced, I was super annoyed with her. She was like, this is the slapstick comedy, you know? Which I never found that funny. And just her always charging for money just made me really annoyed. But I, I have grown to be attached to her. Her dynamic with Luffy is amazing. Her just overall, she's also part of the Coward Trio. Yet she still like find ways to like, get in battles. You know, her moment in Wano in the raid, it was great. Not gonna spoil anything, of course, but it was great. Um, yeah, I don't really have much to say about Nami. Her fan service uh, parts are kind of annoying, but so I think she is gonna go alongside Chopper and Jinbei with the B tier. I still really like Nami. And yeah, just she just has her moments. Although, one thing I will say, one of my least favorite fights in the entire series, and it's ironic that this is in one of my favorite arcs, but her fight versus, I think it's Valentine in in Alabasta, oh my god, that's one of my least favorites. Because you're going against an assassin who should be much more faster than you. Yeah, like, she always manages to barely outspeed her, or barely dodge the attacks. Like, how? It's an assassin. You're supposed to, like, assassinate. Right? But, it's besides the point. Nami's great. Her post time skip design, you know, it's whatever. Uh, it's different. She's like, the, the old dog is like amped up, you know, you know. But, yeah. Robin. Uh, I'm gonna put Robin in S tier. Uh, sorry. I, I, I might move her down to A, but for now, Robin is an S. And I feel like her, any is lobby, that was great, Water 7. One of my f favorite female characters in anime, period. Right? Her. Oh my god. I. I her post, post time skip design, I absolutely hated when I first saw it. Right? Like, I, I obviously, when I went to One Piece, I knew the post skip time skip designs, but still, just seeing it after the time skip, I hated it absolutely. I despise it. Like, po like pre I still stand by that pre time skip Robin had a better design, even if the. Well, it's not really about the, the skin color, like, because I guess that was a mistake by the animation uh, people, company, whatever. But still. And she is actually getting some time to shine at manga, but Oda still, like, he hasn't really been utilizing her that well. But, but one thing I do like is slowly but surely since she joined, she is getting more and more comfortable with the Straw Hats. At first, she was a very, you know, like, nothing will catch her off guard, no nothing will you know, disturb her anyway, she's still her happy, you know, like, kind of, oh, sorry, kind of creepily, like, happy person, and then, after Ennis Lobby, she goes, she, she stops calling everyone by their, like, positions, like, she stops calling 
uh, Luffy Captain, I'm pretty sure. Stop calling Nami Navigator. Usopp, she just called Long Nose, but <laughs> whatever. After that, she actually starts calling them their names, and then eventually in Wano, she feels comfortable enough to, you know, like do the all the gags with everyone else, and that just makes me happy. Luffy. Luffy, that's an S tier. Luffy is just one of the best MCs in all of anime ever, right? He's the typical dumb shonen whatever, except he it's just not in an annoying way. And it's just it's he's also really funny. Like a lot of the dumb like, like Naruto Goku, they don't really like they have jokes, but none of them really seem to land for me. Luffy, Luffy is abs actually hilarious. The Skypea song, amazing. You know the oh, so that's like a what's called it? It's Helmsman is coding Frankie's brother or something like that. Like, Oda does make use of his dumbness, and even though he's dumb, he's still, I, I would argue, one of the most skilled Devil Fruit users in the entire One Piece world. At least top 5. And th that's a bold claim, I know. And I'm not saying that he's top 5 strongest Devil Fruit users, that's obviously insane. But, um, I'm, d I, I'm thinking in skill alone, he is definitely up there. He's just an overall amazing character. I think probably my favorite Straw Hat, probably my favorite One Piece character in general, actually. But yeah, it's, it's great. His time skip, uh, post time skip design is literally the same, except like a scar. Um, his design in general, I really like it. His personality is, re is really interesting. You can never know what Luffy's gonna do, right? Super unpredictable. Yet no matter what he does, we're always like, oh, that's typical Luffy, you know? Like, we don't know what he's gonna do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, like what I was saying is that, you know, typical Luffy, we don't know what he's gonna do, but when he does do it, it just seems like the right fit, you know? So he's just, you know, he's just a really interesting character, really funny, obviously, oh, another thing, his devil fruit. Usually in anime, like, they give the main character very generic power, and when it comes to the more niche, more, like, strategic powers, you know, like, the ones that require a lot of strategy to make the most out of them, those are given to, like, side characters, but in One Piece, Luffy actually is given a pretty unique devil fruit, you know? like being a rubber man and i just feel like the way he uses it is just so you know it's great but anyways yes yeah, so we're gonna leave him in s tier my favorite honestly i'm just gonna put him not that i'm ordering these within the ranks but i'm just gonna put him in the front just so everyone knows like you know he is s tier next we have sanji oh this is this is a tough one and honestly now I'm thinking about it, before I go to that, I think I'm going to move Robin down to an A. Right, okay? Just because I love the Enix Lobby storyline, but now I'm thinking about it, other than that, she really just hasn't done as much to deserve that S ranking. So I'm going to keep her an A, and along with her, I'm putting Sanji. Okay? I... I don't know. Part of me is thinking B... Like, um, it's, this isn't a Zoro versus Sanji thing, because I like, I'm, I'm a Zoro fan, right, if I had to choose between two. But when I was first watching One Piece, like, I obviously knew Zoro and Sanji, they had this big rivalry. I had no idea that within the fandom, there was also a whole Zoro versus Sanji thing. Like, that was crazy to me when I first found out. I'm not like, Zoro's amazing, Sanji sucks, or whatever. I find Zoro more interesting, I like him more, but... Sanji, I also, you know, he's also really interesting, and I like him a lot. But at the same time, post time skip, I feel like Oda hasn't really done as much for him. Obviously, Whole Cake Island's there, right? Whole Cake Island. But, I guess... Okay, so Whole Cake Island was Sanji's arc, right? An arc focused on him. But here's the thing. Dress Rose, so, so we had uh, Fisherman Island, Punk Hazard, like, post time skip arcs. Right? So, and then we had um, Dress Rosa... And then, uh, it's called, uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Whole Cake Island. I can't, I just said it. Um, so, just Rosa, Whole Cake Island. Obviously, Zoe's there, but, you know, Zoe's, like, a relatively small. small. And those two were, were split arcs, where the Straw Hats were cut in half. So, in just Rosa, Zora was there. In, uh, Whole Cake Island, Sanji was there. And then, in Wano, they're all there. And I guess, out of the post time skip arcs, Wano is becoming Zoro's arc. Slowly but surely. Not so much to where he's as much of the main focus as Sanji was. But you can definitely tell there's a lot of focus on him. Which, which like, I don't know how to explain this. So, 
Dress Rosa. It feels like Zoro gets more than Sanji, even though both of them got an arc that they were in, and both of them got their uh, arc focused on them. Well, Sanji's, those were both the same arc. So Sanji was in Hokage Island, and also the arc focused on him. Well, Zoro, he was in Dress Rosa, and then also Wano, the, the arc, that arc also focused on him. So it seems like Zoro had more, but in reality, Sanji also has, you know, a lot of focus. And speaking of Sanji, his backstory is amazing, right? Like, he, he had a backstory early in the series, and then later on, they introduced another backstory within that backstory, which seems like a very convoluted and thing to do, which could mess up, like, when when, off, when authors do that type of thing, it kind of, like, ruins the original backstory upon a rewatch. But if I were to rewatch or read the One Piece manga from the beginning, I doubt that the backstory that was featured in Baratie, I feel like that that would just hold up just as much um, upon rereading. I even more so maybe, because now I know what happened to Sanji before. And it also doesn't feel like something that just sprung up on us, because uh, what's called Jaya, Sanji alluded to that. And that's one of my favorite pieces of foreshadowing. When I think of foreshadowing in One Piece, that now is what comes to my mind, because that's just amazing. Because it's not something where you can overanalyze them and it's like a debatable whether or not it's uh, foreshadowing. This is a clear cut, right? It was a throwaway line that like we didn't think much about then, but still had so much implications that if you were to analyze it or even just think about it for a moment, you'd be like, wait, that doesn't make sense. And then you know you can make your own theories, whatever. And then it, it hundreds of chapters later, they they explain it. That's just crazy to me. Um, yeah, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's when Sanji mentioned that he's from the North Blue, even though the get from North Blue to East Blue, pretty sure you had to like go up the red line or like across the red line. And uh, we know that Jerma did that with their snails. I think Sanji's a great character. But yeah, what I was going to say is that Pat post time skip, his like, you know, the swooning, his perviness, that's gone like way over the charts. Fishman Island. I hated him. He was he would probably be like Fishman Island Sanji, like right right here. I'm not even joking. Fishman Island San Sanji sucked. But you know, I guess like it makes sense because he spent two years alone with no woman. Like dude was pent up, okay? But I don't know. But, but he he improved. He improved. Because you know he got used to seeing women, right? He got used to seeing female bodies. And now he's cool. It's just there aren't really much like singular moments, right? Like Mr. Prince, Alabasta, great. Um, the one he in infiltrated the water, uh, the, the train in Water Seven, great. We didn't, we don't really get to see that like cool, suave side of Sanji, right? If I had this really hyped up, dramatic thing involving him, or uh, like completely disregard, like not disregard, but completely like jokey scene involving him, right? Like that accidental happiness punch, right? Complete joke jokey. We never get to see like just casual like Sanji being just casually so cool. Right? Where he just like chill, you know? Like he just comes off so cool that way and we don't really get to see that much of him anymore. But still overall, like when I think of Sanji, I think I, I like the character. So I'm gonna put him in A. Um things are happening in the manga that might reveal more about him, so I'm really excited to see where that storyline leads to. And next we have a short one. I'm just gonna put Thousand Sunny in D tier. Not anything against it, but it, the only th reason that Mary's above him is because of her storyline with Ennis Love. You know that Thousand Sunny is just the ship. You know Frankie. I mean, it's important to Frankie. I doubt that they're gonna do a thing where Frankie leaves the Straw Hats because they want to abandon the Thousand Sunny. But like the Thousand Sunny, it's just the vessel which carries them from one place to another. There's not much weight, especially since post time skip. Like, like most of the majority of the time where they use the sunny, there are much less of the ch straw heads chilling in the boat scenes, so we rarely see them in the sunny anyways. So yeah, D-tier, nothing personal, sorry. But then Zoro, I think I have to put him in S-tier. He's just, he's amazing. Zoro is, I don't know. I definitely do like earlier Zoro with all of his laughing, but I think him turning more stoic does make sense because of his experience with Mihawk. Um, he, he, like before, bef pre Baratie Zoro, he was so naive. He thought that he was within reach of being the strongest swordsman, which obviously he was not, which he soon realized. And then he like had to like get serious. He had to start training, you know? So I, I it, it does make sense from a narrative point of view, 
and I still like his personality wise like he's he's like a stoic character but at the same time he can very easily slip into jokes like uh, just jokes involving him like him saying something or him getting hit by Nami or whatever still Zoro just an amazing character all around I can't wait to see Wano is gonna do some big things for him I personally believe that um, his sensei from I'm drawing a blank, uh, Kimo Shimotsuki Village, I think. I personally believe that his sensei is going to appear in Wano, and I think like it's going to be some sort of like you know post uh, water any snob lobby arc, like uh, return to Water Seven arc, that type of thing. Where after Wano, they're like chilling there, and then boom, they're going to drop like they're going to do a bunch of exposition on us. Maybe like give go through Zora's biology, maybe give him a flashback. I I doubt it, but maybe. And then have his sensei show up. I do think, or at least mention. If they don't mention his sensei, I, I'm going to be surprised. So, yeah, I think that's it. This is my show height rankings. In S tier, we have Luffy, Usopp, and Zora, my three favorites. And honestly, you know what? I'm going to arrange them. I'll, I'll arrange them. Um, I'll rank them. So, I think, mm, I, I think Robin's going to go in front. Uh, then Brooke, then Sanji. Then Chopper, then Nami, then Jimbei, then then Frankie, then Mary, then Sunny. I think that's how I'm gonna rank it. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I had I had a lot of fun making this tier list, and, and this really was more of a like a a way for me to just not rant but like go on tangents about uh, certain parts of the story because I've been consuming a lot of One Piece content content recently um shout out to mr morge and grand lane review i've been watching a lot of their videos and you know watching like videos about an anime makes you more hyped about that anime you know makes that anime just like that much more of your favorite or whatever so yeah uh so i just had a bunch of th thoughts that like i kept in my head and i wanted somewhere to say it and this video actually kind of acted as a way for me to just go on about stuff about like these characters and my thoughts on things and how things are going to turn out I would really love to do a theory video one day, like Miss like Morge does. Although I don't know how well I'd be able to do it. I'm not that good at analyzing like the story as well as other YouTubers. But still, I do want to make like soul One Piece like, like video essay type videos. And yeah, that I I'm I'm excited about One Piece where it's gonna go, and I really do want to make more One Piece content. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Super fun tier list to make. I think my favorite video so far, just because I really do feel like I articulated myself like a little bit better than usual, and I'm, I've been able to pour my thoughts out. And I feel like, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.